Welcome back to more Project Hospital. So we are in a bit of a bind in terms of money. I don't like how close or how far we have delved into the dark hole that is the uh, bank loan. So what I might do is leave everything as is for the moment. Um, what I think is going to be important for a while is to continue chasing the insurance goals because the insurance goals tend to have different bonuses. So for example, if we are able to treat five patients per day at any specialized department, we're going to get $50,000, which is going to be a nice, cool addition to our bankroll. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it simple and try to focus on making sure we're able to process through about 50 patients a day, uh, or sorry, 35 patients a day to keep this contract with the uninsured rolling along in terms of the bonus objective. So the more people in emergency we get, the more basic treatment, and we can, this is kind of our um, our baseline money. So, right, so we're making, let's see, how much did we start out with? 22 32 six six thousand last uh, yesterday so we're making a good amount of money with our, our with our basic clinic and i think we need to keep that up so what i'm going to do is watch what the uh workloads are like right for example we have a critical workload on one of the offices so i'm going to i say as i complain about loans uh take out a bit more of a loan but at least this time i have a better idea of what i'm trying to do so i'm going to go ahead and throw down three full offices which is a quite a bit of offices, but I want to stay ahead of the game. I want to make sure that we are um, getting our patients nice and happy, uh, getting them treated as soon as we could. You're actually, are you a slow learner? Or, no, it's a fast versus slow. We don't want someone who's slow either. Uh, Elizabeth Hill, you'll be fine. And then we also have a, and you're an intern. You don't really know anything at all, but you're a hard worker, which might mean you're going to learn something over time. So we'll go ahead and throw an intern in there as well to the wolves, basically. Now, the, um, oh, sorry, I actually have to put down a couple more things here. Let's copy over all of our lovely, uh, waiting room area things. If I could line everything up right. There we go. So we'll try to get this, uh, emergency clinic back in full swing, so to speak, or in, in fuller swing, perhaps. It doesn't seem like we're doing much in emergency either. We're not, you don't really get patients in emergency until you buy an ambulance. So the ambulance is going to cost a pretty penny. Now, some of the goals I know down the road will be to get ambulances. So I think I'm just going to save up money in order to be able to buy those ambulances once they come in. Uh, we have two RNs here, sorry, two nurses at the reception. So that's fine. How else is everyone else doing in terms of usage? Do we have any problems? We had a critical usage of our x-ray the other day. I think between the x-ray and the angio, they do get a lot of use out of them. So we might have to make some copies of them down the road. Otherwise, our basic offices uh, or the ba basic departments are just on their own with one generic office. And honestly, I think that's okay for the moment. We didn't really make much money from them yesterday, but I am curious as to see as it picks up, as we get more prestige in all these different departments, if we'll start having more patients show up in, you know, whatever it might be, whether it's going to be uh, internal medicine or uh, I think this is cardio a general surgery or neuro uh, I think it's neuro that's general surgery so some some mix of those things so we'll see if those make us any money if they don't I can always turn them completely off I can send that entire group home and uh, we can try to start uh, back and or not start but we can focus back on emergency and get our money uh, where we need it let's go ahead and set some corridors here because corridors are where your janitors are going to be actually doing the cleaning so I found that blocking your corridors like this into different groups sometimes can help out a bit. So we'll let them uh, focus on that for a while. Get our hospital lovely, clean, and whatnot. Who's bleeding on my floor? Who's bleeding over here? Stop bleeding everywhere. Is there anyone walking around with a limp at all? I don't think so. Just for fun, while we're all here together, let's grab somebody who is getting referred. You're getting referred to our internal medicine uh, uh, department. So it looks like they've went to a basic uh, doctor's office. So they're talking to reception, they're going to go over to the doctor itself, and the doctor's going to go take a break. So there's two people here. God, do you have red bite fever? That sounds horrible. Stre streptococcus? Streptobacillus? Sure. Streptobacillus for you. I wonder if they triage the patients and they'll take the most serious case over... Nope, right now is the guy, uh, our lady, who was there longer. So we'll let them do some, uh, some uh, examinations. I don't know, I mean... I think having these departments by themselves aren't the worst thing in the world. Now we don't, some people don't have all of the diagnostics tools we they might need. So they might complain to us like, hey, well, I need to do a certain EKG on someone or an echo. 
and I can't do that. And honestly, in that case, I may just have to send them off to another hospital. But as long as these different specialty departments are making us money, we're going to be in pretty good shape. And honestly, the, um, the cardio tends to make a lot of money because cardio gives you like thousands of dollars when they're getting their treatment. This guy actually has pulmonary embolism. He's hypertensive. So I want him to get some anti-hypertensive medication as soon as he can. That should suppress the hypertension problem so he doesn't collapse on us, number one. So we'll give him that first. There's no clear... So this is the situation I was just talking about. The thing for us to find between the pulmonary hypertension and the pulmonary embolism uh, would, I'm assuming, be a CT scan. This is a kind of a cool tool, by the way. If you are looking at the diagnosis here, the different possible diagnoses, you're able to click on the diagnosis table to see all the th possible things they could have. And it shows you what the different symptoms are. And you're able to kind of find out, uh, okay, well, if you want to find out if they're um, pulmonary hypertension detected, you can see it at the bottom, we need an echocardiogram. So an echo is going to require the cardiography unit. So do we want to get that just for cardio? It wouldn't be the most expensive thing in the world, would it? It's the... Cardiography unit, that would be $10,000. But $10,000... I mean, a couple of these guys, 10 people, and that would get paid off. Right? Because if we if we scan him 10 times, uh, that's pretty much you're paying off that, that building. And it's not really, I don't think, going to be causing us too much trouble. Let's go ahead and get the cardiography unit for cardio. For that department. We'll put it right here. We'll go ahead and grab ourselves a lovely overnight... Or, sorry, a daytime technologist. Uh, you look fine right there. And now we should be able to give him an echo. So he's going to run over there, go get the echo, and etc. Uh, yeah, we don't have hospitalization, so we understand that part. Where did my friend go? What are you doing? Why aren't you going to get your echo taken care of? Oh, the uh, the person I think wasn't ready in the room yet? Yeah, that, that, was the, that was the issue. I guess they just still wait out here, even if they're going to this room over on that side. I suppose I could put down... A different waiting area so that they're waiting in the actual hallway to be seen. Does it matter? I'm not entirely sure if, if it's considered to be the doctor's office or not. Let's just roll with it and see what happens to this guy. So he's confirmed to be hyper, uh, have pulmonary hypertension instead of the embolism. And he paid us with 11, yeah, there we go. It was actually a thousand dollars worth, fourteen hundred dollars. Holy crap. That was a, uh, a great payout here. Yeah, that's not too bad. You know what? I think that's going to work out. If we get those kinds of things every day, uh, maybe just five or six days, if we get two of those patient, patients every day, that cardiography unit will get paid off. We also were able to get our next insurance objective because we got our uh, $50,000 uh, for treating the at the specialty department. And now we just got 40 tr uh, patients in a day. So we got another $50,000 grant. Awesome. So if we treat 45 patients in a day, we will get an increase in the amount of people sent to us. I think I'm going to put this money towards paying back our loan for a while. I want to get that daily interest down. So we're working towards getting just pure profit and nothing is going to interest. I think that's my current goal. So I'll uh, let time pass a bit more. And also one thing I meant to do is change the certainty level. So the certainty requirement here is telling you that before someone gives a diagnosis, like for example, let's just pick uh, this random person here. If they had a bunch of different diagnoses lying around and they were at 50% or something, before they they actually choose that diagnosis, they'd have to be at a certain percentage according to this certainty me measure here. So we're going to bump it to high for our emergency department. I want to make sure that our doctors are doing everything they can to confirm that a patient has whatever they have uh, before we start treating them. And that could prevent people from coming back, which really prevents our lovely prestige from getting damaged. Nice. We actually managed to do 45 patients today. Uh, the next thing for bonus objective for the uninsured is to treat 50, which gives us a prestige bonus. We save someone after collapsing. That'll be one intern. If we open hospitalization, we get an increase of clinic patients up to 15. So I think if we decide to go the route of opening hospitalization, I was looking over it. I believe general surgery might be the best route because I think that includes almost everything. I think it might be a stopgap for, for all the different emergencies that are around. So I'll try to find out how often that gets used, but if we open up our first surgical to wing, basically, I think I'm going to do it in uh, general surgery. So I'll uh, let this run overnight. Let's make some money and uh, come back to it tomorrow.
We're bringing down the loan pretty well. I think we've got most of our departments now making a good uh, good penny. Uh, I think I want to try to watch some people this time around just to see. Let's pick a random dude or do that. Hang on. Why are we... Why are we not seeing anybody right now? It's 9 o'clock. Surely we should have some... What happened here? Did I break my hospital somehow? You're leaving. Did my thing get all sorts of screwed up or did you get treated? I'm so confused. Sorry, it's, it's just a little bit awkward because I can't seem to... I don't seem to have anyone coming into emergency right now. Did I break my hospital? <laughs> you know what's interesting? I did let the... um. The stopwatch run. And I wonder if it got super bugged or something like that. Well, that's annoying. <laughs> I think we actually skipped right on through the opening of the clinic. Like, literally, the game is acting as though the hospital is completely closed. Mechanically speaking, I don't think it is. Ugh. Well, that's going to be a little expensive, but it's not going to kill us overall. I'll skip ahead uh, to the next day, and I guess everyone just gets a holiday. Well, that was a, a painful day. No profits to be seen whatsoever, so we'll have to see... How, I, I think it was one of those things, I really think it was a bug, that I just had the stopwatch going to go skip through the night, but for some reason it didn't quite register. So let's see if anyone decides to come visit us today. I'd be so irked if they don't. I think they are. Here they come. Yay! Hooray! <laughs> let's grab a patient, and uh, let's track somebody through the entire process to see how, how it works right now, and how, they're, uh, how our doctors are handling things. I like how I'm depressed and I'm going to fill up your neck is going to be one of the... Uh, Oh, that's true. To be fair, hypothyroidism does cause uh, depression in some cases. That's right. Well, there, that goes, uh, that's what I get for trying to, you know, think I know something. Um, what are the other things, too? Now, I can't really check this anymore because yesterday's statistics were none, so we're not going to have any measurement of how the workload was. But after today, I might start looking at getting uh, a copy of the MRI, not the MRI, sorry, the X-ray and the angio, because those two are the ones that are relatively used a lot. All right, so our lovely Rachel Johnson is having trouble with this person. So they have a uh, loss of appetite. I guess we'll just do blood pressure, uh, physical examination, things like that. And we'll wait to see what the results are. Their little hands look like little tiny white daggers. <laughs> it's really weird. Uh, she's got a fever. Hey, there we go. She suddenly has chicken pox. Well, awesome. Glad that we could have been uh, of assistance there, my friends. My friend doctors. I haven't had anyone collapse yet, so we're still waiting on getting someone to fall over. <laughs> uh, after they collapse, we'll be able to get the uh, next intern that's going to be available for hire will be great, which will be kind of neat. Let's take a look at one of our other specialty areas. How are we doing over here? What do you have, my friend? You have ulnar claw? What in the world is that? The area affected is very sensitive when touched. Interesting. Cubital tunnel syndrome. I'm going to get that when I keep playing games forever. Uh, we've got a person who had a pretty severe injury, a uh, regular heartbeat. Honestly, where are you? Are you treated? No, you need to get something done here. Regular heartbeat can be treated by beta blockers. So I'm going to give him beta blockers in order to um, suppress the irregular heartbeat. Because we can't really operate on it, I don't think. I wonder if that's actually an option. If we If we had cardio fully developed, I wonder if there would actually be a surgery that would let us operate on the mitral valve. I don't really know how that stuff works, but it was a nice payment, 770 bucks for that. I'll take it. What else do we have at other departments? A couple other happy campers, 280 for urinary tract infection. Was that our general surgery? I do I do think that I am going to build out the general surgery wing, because it seems like that would be relatively decent uh, to work with. Like, it's it's going to have the uh, the equipment we need. And uh, for, for pretty much, I don't know, I, I guess they'll do generic surgery. What, what, what does general surgery do? Do they do everything? Will they do cardio as well? They're just maybe not quite as good as, you know, the actual specialty cardio department? No idea. Another fun one, I do like these uh, things that pop up because it does help the game feel, I don't know, a little bit more alive. I guess you're feeling like you're doing a little bit more with your hospital when you get those messages that they're having trouble with the diagnosis. So we've got somebody with acute mastoiditis and otorrhea. Otoria or Otoria. All of these are audiometry, ear examination, audiometry. Is there anything that would be really conclusive? I guess we don't have an audiometry because we don't have, uh, let's see, diagnostic unit. This is probably just a generic diagnostic unit. Any office diagnostic. I thought we had one up in cardio. We have a cardiogram up here. Okay, can we build, out of curiosity, can we just build a diagnostic unit? 
We totally could. Can I just... Let me just throw this down. I'm curious to see if we put this down inside of cardio, if they'll use it. So the diagnostic unit can just get thrown down. Are we on the right floor for cardio? We are. All right, so diag it's being a pain for me. It wasn't letting me pick it. There we go. So di diagnostic unit. Let's see. Can I give him... Now that we have it placed down, not quite. So this must be only available through... I'm guessing this is either going to be neurology or internal medicine. Is where that um, that building would be at or, the, or that uh, location. So what can we do with that? The treatment for both of these, one is IV antibiotics and one is antibiotics. So I guess we could just say... Oh god, don't give him that. Um... I honestly don't know what to do here. We don't have any any other options. I could send him up to... Let's send him up to neurology. We'll change departments. Because I forgot that you can even do that. You can assign people to different departments. Although I don't think this guy's going to get up in time to get treated. We'll see. Let's see if somebody can do something really quick. Oh, he actually... Auto he can do the audiometry by himself. Well, crap. It's just any office. <laughs> it's any office slash diagnostic unit. So apparently I missed that option. Well, that's fine. Cardiology now has... A lovely diagnostic unit. Hooray, he just got treated in time. Wonderful. All right, I'll speed through again. Again, we're trying to blow through uh, some of the basic stuff, get money built up. Yeah, you're transferring because you don't like us. That's fine. Waiting for somebody to collapse. Uh, do we, we do have enough money for a couple of hot, um, ambulances. And at some point, one of these objectives is going to change over to buy a couple, hosp uh, buy a couple of ambulances. So we're waiting for that one. How much do we have overall? We're down to 36,000 in loans, or 360,000 in loans. We could take a loan out and finish up the general surgery, but I do think I want to keep beating down that loan uh, cost. So I will fast forward again. Thanks for uh, being patient with me as I jump back and forth. I think I'd like to show you, you know, how the hospital's progressing, but at the same time, there's a lot of dead air to fill. So I'm just going to keep skipping forward until interesting things happen. Maybe we'll have a collapse soon. Yay! So one thing I'm noticing is that a lot of people are having to leave when they're waiting at the labs. And it does seem like the labs, especially for something like uh, microbial, uh, what was that, microbial something or other sampling, it, they put the sample in the fridge for a bit, and then they have to come back and take a look at it later. So I'm guessing maybe another body or two wouldn't hurt to uh, help out. Even though it says its workload is low, I really do think that there's more work to be done there. So I'm going to try to get somebody in here, now that we've got a little bit more money. An early bird would not be bad. Hard worker does not take free time. Honestly, hard workers, I think, are super strong. And 68%, so she's a little bit better than Dana Lewis. So, uh, Sarah Lopez, welcome to the team. I think I want to do the same thing at the hematology lab. I don't see the same problem at the, uh, whatever this one was, the histology. But I do see that problem sometimes at the uh, hematology. So, we're going to grab a copy of the same equipment here. And I'm going to do, uh, we've got enough money for the day. So, that should work out. So, you go here. And we'll throw down another employee on this side. Maybe another... Oh, you know what? Let's grab the early bird. That's fine. They won't, won't be too bad either. So, two of those. Or, uh, yeah, one each. Um, we're going to also maybe look at getting a replacement for the MRI. God, I did it again. X-ray. <laughs> at some point. What are you in here for? You're rather late in the day. I don't really think we're going to be able to treat you anyways. You're hospitalized. That's the part that sucks about ho uh, hospitalization when you've got nowhere to send them, because once they're, you know, in observation, they have to go somewhere one in the after afternoon, but they can't, so we wind up transferring them to a different department, but, or rather, a different hospital. Uh, but either way, that's no big deal. We, uh, we'll lose one person out of however many we had today. See, this could have taken us over the uh, 50 mark, which is one of our insurance goals. At least our prestige is still really high. Pretty much on the dot. Of uh, oh, as, as close to 100% as we can get. Look at all these people that weren't treated, though. Holy crap. Gosh, what is, is this all from labs? This is just kind of nuts, to be honest. This was the person I was looking at. They had, uh, she had microbial cultivation. Microbial cultivation was her last thing. Let me take a look at some of the offices for the specialties and see if they had any kind of a critical workflow. Yeah, one of them did. I wonder if we should have two of these offices for each department. That might make sure that if one of them's on break, someone's always available, by and large, to help anyone that shows up. And it's not hurting us uh, us too much. I think we're getting the money here. Let's see. Uh, how much did we get? 
151, 2,000, 5,000, 1,400. So that's pretty good. I mean, we're we're making decent money from these different specialty departments. Uh, well, it's only been a couple days, but I do think that it's going to be worthwhile for us to invest in these specialty departments, uh, the clinic version of them. So I'm going to go through. I will take a bit of a loan out. It's not going to be quite as expensive as putting in the surgery. So this this shouldn't break the bank too bad. Okay, so every department now has two, uh, count them, two offices. And it really didn't break the bank. That's It's like one loan or two loans we had to take out there. Hopefully in a couple days that'll pay itself back. But I think if we try to speed everything up by always having someone available, that's going to help us in the long run. Because, you know, people getting left behind, those are nine, uh, nine patients that we're not getting money from. So I think by focusing on making sure that there's a quick turnaround whenever someone shows up to an office... Uh, whenever show, someone shows up to a lab, the the next big thing in that regards then would be radiology. So I'll um, take care of that maybe after a couple more loans. But let's see how tomorrow looks with the addition of our new residents and new uh, attendings and the uh, different offices and the specialties. All right, so the end of this day, uh, we saw a pretty decent profit. We still didn't serve seven people, which kind of sucks. So, you know, it says seven right away, but it's way more than seven that had to leave. Um... What was the issue here then? Do we have pretty much the same problem as before, or was it downstairs? Let's take a quick peek at the load balancing, if you will. Uh, medium in cardiology, everything else looks pretty basic. Again, high with our scans. I think the scans have to come up sooner than later. Uh, medium across the board, it looks like, in emergency as well. So, how much do we make today, which is always important. Holy crap, do we make a crap ton of money in cardio? What in the world? I did watch a couple of people get like, you know, dilators or beta blockers or what have you. I didn't quite realize we were on such a tear with cardio. Wow, so should cardio be the first department we open up? If they're going to be, you know, if we're going to be having surgeries of that of that magnitude. Now, I don't know if surgeries are going to be the same amount of money that we're making with just the office. But man, I would love to have the cardio um, department nice and built up because that's crazy. $13,000 in one day. I think it's always been the one that's made, made the most money since we started opening up these specialized departments. I'll let it roll for another day or two, and then I think I'll make a decision about where we're going to go with our uh, income. Um, so, again, general surgery could be one option, but boy, if we're pulling down that much money from from um, doing heart surgeries and things like that, I'd be pretty happy. The only, the only danger, though, is if we start getting people who have heart failure, they're going to be dropping like flies. So we're going to have to have and I see you, I think, on standby to pick them up and take care of them. So one thing I tried differently today, um, actually, maybe one more person gets treated, maybe 50? Oh, man. We were so close to getting our 50 mark to go over the insurance requirement, but I did switch back to the um, the lower certainty level because I noticed that even when somebody had a 100% diagnosis, they were still sent off to get more testing instead of given... Uh, the drug to, to treat it. So I'm wondering if that was part of it. But what I think we're going to do, if you take a look at our money and our budget for today, we made another good killing through cardiology. I think it's time, especially if we're going to try to chase some of the uh, in the insurance requirements, I think it's going to be time to go ahead and open up a specialized department. So let's go ahead and talk about that. We're going to go up to cardiology here. And yeah, we're going to go ahead and take out a pretty big loan, probably about uh, 50, 60,000. And we're going to set up a cardiology emergency department. So first things first, we're going to do the cardiology department here. And I'm going to put down my operating room. And I think in this zone, the way everything's laid out, I'm going to have most of my offices up here and probably the surgical stuff down here. Again, like I said before, we can always move things. We can adjust things as needed. But for the moment, because I'm still learning the game and I'm still trying to find out the best layout for everything, I'm going to try to put the operating room here right in the corner. And I could probably stick another operating room right next to it. So I'll put an operating room here. And I'd forgotten about this, but I never really fixed it on any of my floors. But I'd always plan for the hallways to go straight to the end, like this. So we should have enough room for a bathroom between the next OR. So it'll be basically two ORs back to back in this area. So I want to have my patients relatively close to the OR so they don't have to be pulled a super far distance. So I think this entire area is going to be made up of my wards, my um, where people are getting watched and whatnot. So if we go back to the different areas, I don't think high dependency units are used as often as a regular ward would be or an individual room. So we can either do a room like this 
this has four beds to a six by 12. Or we can do a regular ward, which is a six by four. So honestly, we're going to get more beds out of this than we would anything else. But the, I mean, the patients don't care if they don't have privacy. So I'm kind of torn. I wouldn't mind doing this at all. We could have two of these next to each other, or we could have four regular wards where they get their own individual bedroom. Uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and do this. Let's give them their own individual room. There's for no other reason than just for, I like the idea of a patient having their own private room. So that's a pretty standard ward. And then I think I'm going to put my nurse's station right smack dab in the middle. And I'm going to give the bigger one that's got about six stations for nurses because we are going to have a lot of nurses moving around for surgery and also checking on patients during the day. So boom, there's four wards there. What I'm going to do is add a couple more wards on this side as well, along with an HDU, a high dependency unit bedroom. Maybe two of them because this is cardio we're talking about. So there might be an issue with, uh, with the heart later on. So that is a pretty long set of rooms. We're also going to add a uh, a restroom on this side so people can pick whichever bathroom they want. And then finally, the on-call room for the actual surgeons down here. So there is the surgeon's room. Everything is uh, still all tucked in a nice row. We have enough room for another surgery, uh, surgical OR. We do have a diagnostic unit already, right? We have got everything but the sonography unit. So I think I'm going to add that in here. Do we have the sonography? Is this the same type of room? Uh, let me double check here real fast before I do. This is the cardiography. This is the diagnostic. So I will add the sonography because it looks like it's going to be some kind of a diagnostic tool, which would be relatively important. Right. There we go. So everything's done. All we need to do now is add a probably another cleaning closet to the end of this hallway. So our janitors have somewhere to get all their equipment from. Awesome. Let's start the hiring spree because now we've got all the buildings in place and all the um, the required rooms we have to get the required staff. So I don't really want to like go cheap on this side. I want to get kind of the best of the best. So let's grab our anesthesiologist first. Uh, all of you kind of suck. <laughs> Not going to lie. Let's go ahead and do another round. 43% on her. And she is fast. I think I'm going to be okay with that. You really don't want, let's see, gives mean staff modifier after interacting with patient. Uh, is she, is it really going to matter? Because she's the anesthesiologist. I think if she interacts at all, it would matter. I'll tell you what. Instead, how about... I hate this. I want someone with a high anesthesiology score or anesthesia skill. That's fine. We can spend some money looking for candidates. It's not the worst thing in the world. Um, you're an alcoholic, which doesn't sound like a great idea for uh, this kind of a job. But I think it's going to be the better of options. No, germ you don't want a germaphobe, from what I understand, on anything with surgery, because they'll sit there and wash their hands three times before surgery. So let's grab Casey Williams for the anesthesiologist. Uh, for the surgeon, we want somebody with cardiothoracic surgery, and I assume I want them to be relatively good. Oh, sorry, I wasn't searching by surgeon. So 49% here. I don't think I want someone slow, because that means they're going to get to the actual OR room slower. You are fast, and you have a long commute, which means you'll be late, although... I don't really have a lot of people show up for surgery early on. It normally takes a couple hours into the day before that happens. However, their skill in surgery sucks. So let's go ahead and rotate over to new uh, new people. You are a Spartan. Your needs are reduced much slower and resting is much faster. I think people, person, and loyal. I think I'm going to grab Frank Clark. 38% skill, 92% skill in cardiology. And cardio surgery is 38. So we're going to go ahead and grab him as our main surgeon. Then we just need a regular old doctor. So somebody who has pretty decent skills across the board. You're just actually friendly. So I think I'm going to grab you. Frank Moore, who's got a pleasant trait. I don't know what you actually need people to do at night. I'm guessing they might treat someone who's crashing in one of the rooms. So I'm, I'm guessing you're going to want somebody who is relatively fast. And I don't mind. Oh, you're yeah, you're going to spend twice as much time enjoying food. That's fine. As long as you're good, you're relatively good at cardiology and you're fast, that's going to be fine with me. So James Miller, you are on the night shift. Now nurses, we're going to need kind of the same thing. We're going to need a cardio surgeon tech, uh, surgical nurse here for the day. Because I don't think they're going to do any surgeries at night. So we'll grab somebody who has, you, you actually don't have any traits whatsoever, Thomas Young. You're relatively neutral. Now the other people I want to have either fast or pleasant because they're the ones who are going to be interacting with patients all the time. So let me rotate with more people. You are clean-footed. 
I like people who are hard workers. That's actually a really great trait because they're not going to take any breaks pretty much. There was also somebody there with a Night Owl. Night Owl also not taking breaks. Great. Those are great nurses to have. Night time. Let's see if we can't get somebody who also has the speedy trait or something. Uh, this is Night Owl. This means you're going to work much more efficiently during the night. There we go. And you have a pleasant modifier. Great. All right. So that takes care of that. I think I'll give uh, a couple of people into the janitor closet and whatnot. And the only real thing we have to do, I think, is probably just make this area a corridor so our janitors can clean it up during the day because it's going to start getting a little bit dirtier than the rest of cardio has been. But yeah, we're ready to go. What's going to happen is a patient will get um, sent to cardiology. Let me go ahead and do one more thing. Let's do... Oof. This was a rather expensive loan, and I'm hoping that this department can uh, can pay for itself here coming up in the next day or two. I have enough money to put the flooring down? I do! Hooray! Flooring! <laughs> Apparently flooring... Oh, no, you do, need, you do need money to put flooring down. But people will get uh, admitted either by a referral or by... Like a referral from outside the hospital, or you can refer them yourself. Um, then they'll get admitted to a ward room. Wow, we actually have our first patient. Nice! We have somebody who has the mitral valve uh, prolapse. So what do we have for you? Just observation? Let's watch this guy for a little bit. I'm kind of curious what happens here. We'll spend a little bit of time, I think, on this tonight um, in this uh, in this episode and a little bit more time tomorrow because I really haven't gotten to see how cardio works in the game. But I do like the positioning right here. I like that the nurse's station is right in the middle of all of our staff rooms or all of our, um, our patient rooms. Please don't be dead or anything. <laughs> I don't know what happens to you. When do you get, um, do you just get, we watch you overnight? Is that pretty much it? You have any good things? Bored, need critical, rough night, professional care. Yeah, it's going to be a bit awkward because they were kind of bounced all over the place. So tomorrow during the day, we're going to have probably a better experience with our first couple of cardio patients. Okay, so it's morning. Let's see if our guy wakes up and gets out of bed here. Yep, sure enough. He paid us 1300 bucks. And he lives to see the day, uh, another day. So to watch the department, what we can actually do is pull up the summary, uh, go over to cardio, and then we can open up the patient chart. And so this way we'll be able to see all the patients that are coming into cardio. And I like to watch them as they come in uh, because it's, well, number one, cardio patients are terrifying because they're pretty much like all ready to die. Like right now, uh, Peter Jones is having heart palpitations and there's a chance he might have, hey, look, he's collapsing. <laughs> this is perfect. All right, so let's see what happens here. Let's close down a couple things. He is uh, collapsed on the floor. And I wonder, who is our responding nurse? Is it just going to be anyone? You'll see them start sprinting. So one of my doctors jumped out of the room. I have seen people just lying on the floor forever, and you're like, uh, seriously? Awkward. I think they're going to just randomly start CPR. I think she's grabbing, or he's grabbing a stretcher for them. Is he stabilized? This is what's causing the collapse. Okay, so he's going down in the elevator. Let's go watch that. He's probably going to take, get taken to the trauma center, I'm assuming. But I think if we stabilize him, we're going to get that reward coming up here in a minute. IV infusion. Okay, cool. So finally, the, the on-call doctor and nurse have been waiting for hours and years and days uh, for this trauma center to be needed. So now they're going to start getting all of our followers in here from uh, cardio. There we go. The next one intern available will be a great candidate. Cool. So what's the next step for insurance here? Enable a hospitalization at ICU, and we're going to unlock ambulances. Okay, fair enough. Well, that's pretty cool. We got this guy hospitalized. We're still needing to figure out what's wrong with him. So he's going to have to go get examined and all that kind of stuff to figure out if he's got the uh, pericarditis or whatever else is going on. Meanwhile, I think we'll jump around a bit and see some of our other patients here. I love how many people are lined up in cardio, though. That's excited. Or, ex excuse me, exciting, even. We've got two people hospitalized. One of them has angina, pectoris, and also endocarditis. Was that the guy in the... No, that's Carol Anderson. Interesting. We'll take a look at some of these other folks in a minute. You, I should go ahead and just send you right on to neurology. Anyone that has any eye problems, I pretty much just change the department immediately so we don't waste any time going through the general hospital stuff. Cool, so we've got two people who are currently waiting for something. What do you guys have queued up? I think we've just got you on hospitalization here. Or do we have surgery queued up for you? Where are you going? Transporting to 
examination, we have an interview with you. Is that what we're going to be doing right now? Normally, whatever the, the pulsating yellow thing is, is what's what's happening right at this moment. So we actually have an EKG, angiography. Okay, so he's actually getting examined in kind of the diagnostic room. Fair enough. Hospitalized, checked by a nurse. Let's check on Carol Anderson, who has a high threat. You can tell the hazard level here. She is having chest pain, a bunch of stuff. Endocarditis is going to what require IV antibiotics. So it looks like some of these treatments, you basically just have to run them on an IV for a while. Then they'll stabilize, and the next day, they will be um, released from the hospital. Either way, that's going to be a good bit of money for us. How much money have we made so far? Not much. The payments come in the next morning for anyone who's who stays overnight. So we're not going to see that lovely payment from everyone until tomorrow. But this has been a fun episode for me. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, we are on the cusp of bankruptcy. <laughs> we have $20,000 left, and I don't want to dip into that. So I'm literally crossing my fingers that cardio is going to be the one that's making us all the money coming up. But I hope to, uh, before the next surgery happens, I will show you that in the next episode. Here's to hoping we get a cardio patient or two. And yeah, thanks so much for joining me for more Project Hospital, my friends. My name has been Tobel. Take care.